Following the government's failed preparation to manage expectations before the reveal of their not-so-mini budget last month, the consequences on the economy have mostly been negative. As a high-level overview, the value of the pound crashed to its lowest ever value against the dollar. The Bank of England decided to make a U-turn on ceasing their quantitative easing measures and committed to buying these things called long-term bonds for a two-week period, with fears that if they didn't do this, it would have resulted in the insolvency of several pension funds, which most likely would have had a knock-on effect, causing another financial crash. It should come as no surprise that Kwasi Kwarteng lost his job and became the second shortest running Chancellor of the Exchequer, only to be beaten by someone who passed away on the job. Now that was a lot to unpack, and what I just provided was just a general overview of what's happened in the last couple of weeks. But it did beg the question, on what would happen if pension providers did collapse? What does this mean for the likes of you and me who have or are saving in their pensions, either privately or by themselves or with an employer? I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Aside from the recent news, pension safety should be something we are all aware of especially considering the natural life cycle of economics, where there are always winners and losers in business. And some of those losers will become bankrupt, leaving several retirees and pension savers associated to that business left concerned about what will happen to their retirement income. Now, in the unfortunate cases where this does happen, what happens next will vary, particularly for those that are on a defined benefit scheme versus those on a defined contribution scheme. Let's look at these one by one. Starting with defined contributions. This, of course, is the type of pension where the amount you get at retirement is based on how much you have contributed and, if applicable, your employer too. And because the amount contributed is invested on the market, the amount you get at retirement is also reliant on the performance of your investment as well. Defined contribution schemes include both workplace pensions, so the pension you get with your employer, if you obviously are employed, and personal private pensions, which are more common for those that are self-employed, but it is open to anyone. So how are you protected? So first off, it is worth clarifying that for workplace pensions, if your employer does go bust, then normally you won't have a problem, as usually your workplace pension is run by another pension provider company. For example, for my workplace pension, it is handled by Standard Life, and I work for a completely different company. So in the event that your employer does go bust, then your pension will still be fine. You might still want to check, however, if the company has finished off paying their proportion of contributions into your pension, as this is usually done in arrears. And if they haven't, you may have grounds to claim this money as compensation. That means the only real concern for any defined contribution pension is if your pension provider goes bust instead. Now, all registered pension schemes in the UK will be regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. This is an independent body whose job it is to set out a set of regulations that pension schemes must follow. And this will cover how the pension must operate and how they are managed, all with the aim to reduce the risk of things going wrong and to protect the savers. However, in the event that the pension provider does go bankrupt and the provider was regulated by the FCA, then you will be able to claim compensation from the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, or FSCS for short, who will aim to get 100% of what you've lost, but this is not guaranteed. Now, you may have heard of the FSCS before or even seen their logo when it comes to protecting bank accounts. However, the same does apply to private pensions. Now, the amount of protection you do get does depend on when the pension provider did go bust and the type of defined contribution pension you have. If you look at their website, if the firm failed after the 1st of April 2019, you're entitled to get 100% of your pension back. However, if you have a SIP, which is just another type of private pension, and the SIP operator fails, you are only eligible to get cover up to £85,000 per institution you have invested with. Any money above this amount is not guaranteed. Note that this cover is per institution. So if you are concerned about SIP providers failing and you are in a position to do so, you can diversify your retirement funds across multiple providers to maximise the amount of protection you can achieve. However, it is worth noting that by doing this, you will increase the amount of pension fees you'll have to pay as well. If you want to look in more detail at what else the FSCS covers, I'll put a link in the description box down below. And on a final note, it is important to also distinguish that this protection is not given if the performance of your pension investments do poorly. 
As I mentioned earlier, the value of your defined pension is also determined by the performance of your investment. And the value of your pension fund can go up and down at any time, as it just comes part and parcel with investments in general. So if your investments do particularly poorly, which means you get less money than you've put in, then this is not going to be covered. Now moving on to the other type of pension scheme, which is the defined benefit pension, also known as final salary or career average scheme. Now these types of pension schemes are less available and are only really available in the public sector, like NHS pension schemes or older workplace pension schemes. Now the way that these pension benefits are calculated through this type of scheme is that first it will take into account your years of service to the pension scheme and the second will take into account your salary as well. Now these types of schemes are also protected and they are protected by the Pension Protection Fund or PPF for short, which was set up by the government in 2005 to protect millions of people throughout the UK. Looking at the government website, the PPF is a fund whose responsibility it is to pay compensations to members of eligible defined benefit pension schemes in the event of insolvency in relation to the employer and where there are insufficient assets in the pension scheme to cover pension protection fund levels. So in gist, if your employer has gone bankrupt or lacks the funds to pay for your full benefits, the PPF will step in to cover as much of the costs as eligible. The level of protection you can get does depend on whether you have passed your normal pension age, which is just the age at which you can access your defined benefit pension without penalty, and when the employer itself went bust. So looking at scenario one, if you are over the normal pension age or you started drawing on your pension early due to ill health, you will be entitled to receive 100% protection and the PPF will pay for your full pension benefits going forward. Scenario two, if you are under your normal pension age, you are entitled to receive a pension of 90% of the amount you've built with your employer when they became bankrupt. So if you are entitled to 1,000 pounds per month from the scheme at the point of bankruptcy, you will only receive 90% of this, which will work out to be 900 pounds per month from the PPF. The PPF will also increase your benefits annually in line with inflation, which is similar to what most defined benefit pension schemes tend to do, but this is capped at a maximum of 2.5%. So not super useful when you're going through an inflationary crisis like today. So I actually tried to do some research into examples of these protection schemes being put into action. And I have to be honest, I really struggled to find much of an answer, which either means one, pensions don't collapse, which I know can't be true. Two, I'm a terrible Google searcher, possibly true. Or three, the information is hidden. But the information that I did find did include the example of the collapse of British Home Stores or BHS, which offered defined benefit schemes to their employers. Their pension fund was actually rescued by a $1 billion insurance buyout in 2018 and the collapse of another company called Carillion, who also provided defined benefit schemes and ceased operations in 2018. And their scheme was rescued by the Pension Protection Fund, which did mean some members did have to accept lower benefits. Looking at the FSCS, and although I did struggle to find actual examples of these being put into action, reading their latest annual report, they do state, we are also seeing more customers with losses over the limit to which we can compensate. On pensions alone, excluding SIP claims, the number of claims has increased by 26% year on year over the last four years. Unfortunately, the number of customers with losses over the compensation limit increased by more than 15% last year. With more consumer harm comes rising compensation costs for industry. And when you further read onto the report, you do understand that the FSCS has provided funds to individuals on the basis of failed pension providers. Although this report does show an alarming amount of people not getting their full refund. Bringing it full circle to understand what this does mean when we compare it to today's news, when the Bank of England had to step in to protect the solvency of pension funds. So it is my understanding that any pension failure in these circumstances would have fallen under the protection of the FSCS scheme or the Pension Protection Fund if your provider was eligible. That's because this issue wasn't directly caused by the poor performance of the investments made by the consumer, i.e. bonds in this case but rather it was due to the complex financial instruments that these pension companies purchased, known as derivative contracts, to insure themselves in the event that bond prices would fall. Now, as this has nothing to do with the investments that the saver has chosen, in the event of a pension provider collapsing, this should have been protected by the FSCS scheme or the Pension Protection Fund. So how can we make sure that we are protecting ourselves? 
By the way, I do want to state that the point of this video wasn't to scaremonger you to thinking that pensions are a bad thing, because they are absolutely not. And if handled responsibly, they are probably one of the best ways to save for your retirement. However, with that being said, the economic turmoil that we've experienced over the last few weeks and likely to experience for the next several months should be used as an opportunity to reflect and see if there are other ways to safeguard our financial future. For example, splitting your pensions across multiple institutions may be one solution, but perhaps maybe not the most cost efficient way. Or perhaps even a better way might be to diversify your portfolio and hold funds in stocks and shares ISAs or even LISAs instead thus reducing your risk to economic events that will negatively impact the pension market. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below if you are concerned for your pension and if you have any other tips on safeguarding your financial future. Also, please hit that like button and subscribe for my future content. Bye.